It is a strip of linen cloth, 14 and a half feet in length, that bears the mysterious pale colored image of a man faintly visible on the cloth. However, negative photography reveals startling details that are not visible to the naked eye. The man of the shroud was approximately five foot 10 inches tall and weighed around 170 pounds. More intriguingly, this man had been scourged and crucified and his head bore wounds consistent with having been capped with a crown of thorns. The Shroud of Turin is the most studied object in all of history. From every single academic discipline, physics, medicine, forensics, botany, hematology, history, as well as photography and other imaging. It is distinguished among historical artifacts in that the more we know, the more there is left to learn. It is an object that yields more questions with every single answer questions that this podcast series will ask and explore about what is possibly the most fascinating object known to exist. This is Father Peter Mangum, rector of the Cathedral of St. John Berkman's in Shreveport, Louisiana, and a member of the American Confraternity of the Holy Shroud, an organization dedicated to research and dissemination of knowledge about this unique relic in the possession of the Roman Catholic Church. The American Confraternity of the Holy Shroud is currently the only authorized affiliate group of the Arch Confraternity of Turin, the custodians of the Shroud since 1592. And I'm Dr. Cheryl White, Associate Professor of History at Louisiana State University in Shreveport, and also a member of the American Confraternity of the Holy Shroud. I've had a lifelong interest in the study of this remarkable historical object that has significant religious implications. Our interest in producing this podcast series entitled, Who is the Man of the Shroud?, has been spurred by our attendance at two significant gatherings of Shroud scholars from around the world, one being the International Conference on the Shroud of Turin in Washington State this past year, as well as a visit to the Distinguished Shroud Center of Colorado with some of the leading experts on the cloth today. This weekly series is being sponsored by the Cathedral of St. John Berkman, where efforts are being dedicated to a regional center for the study of the Shroud of Turin. Father Peter and I invite everyone to join us weekly here as part of this podcast as we examine various aspects of this cloth, what is known and yet unknown. So in this first episode, let's get to some very basic background information. The cloth known as the Shroud of Turin entered the undisputed historical record in the middle of the 14th century when it went on public display in Lyre, France. From that point forward, the chain of custody of this artifact is well documented to the present day, housed in the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in Turin, Italy, where it has been since 1578. For over 500 years of verifiable historical record, we know that Christian pilgrims venerated this cloth as the burial shroud of Jesus Christ, without any of the vast knowledge known to us today through modern science and emerging technologies. You see, it wasn't until 1898 that a photographer named Secunda Pia had permission to make the first photograph of the shroud. And when he entered the darkroom to process his film, he became the first man in history to see the fullness of the negative image, an anatomically perfect, radiated image of a man who bore the unique wounds documented in only one man of history. The Age of Shroud Inquiry was officially launched, and it has captivated the attention, energy, and dedication of scholars ever since. In 1978, scholars from a variety of disciplines were given unprecedented access to the Shroud of Turin for five days, something known as the Shroud of Turin Research Project, or STIRP. Its lead scientist was nuclear physicist Dr. John Jackson, who is still quite active in shroud research today and is a founding member of the American Confraternity of the Holy Shroud. That 1978 project was the first and last comprehensive examination of the cloth to have taken place. Carbon-14 dating was permitted on the shroud in 1988 with heavily disputed findings that we will deal with in future podcasts. But what we know today, we owe largely to these efforts of 40 years ago. So, was it a clever medieval forgery? A type of iconography made by an artist with knowledge of techniques that are unknown or lost to us today? Is it the burial cloth of Jesus Christ, described in all four gospel accounts, bearing his image, created by some burst of radiation at the moment of resurrection, not unlike the scene depicted in the famous movie, The Passion of the Christ? 
While these questions are ones that scholars continue to seek answers for, there are a number of important things that can be said with certainty. First of all, the image is not a painting. The image was created by a process that 21st century scientists, including nuclear physicists, have been unable to fully understand or duplicate. The image on the shroud contains a three-dimensional code that has been extracted by imaging specialists, and this is a characteristic completely unique to only this historical object. Photographs and paintings do not bear three-dimensional information. The cloth bears no evidence of paints or dyes of any kind. In fact, the only pigment identified in the shroud of Turin is human blood, type AB. The cloth contains numerous pollen spores, identified by botanists as very specific species, some of which are native only to a small region of the Middle East. The shroud contains soil samples, identified as being native to a very specific area of the old city of Jerusalem. And the weave of the linen itself is quite unusual, and not found in any known medieval cloths in existence. Although the undisputed and uninterrupted historical record begins in the 14th century, there is very good historical evidence that the cloth existed going back to the 1st century AD. The unique visual features of the shroud, easily seen by the human eye, have been found replicated in numerous medieval and even ancient artworks and icons, indicating to us that those artists had also seen the cloth that we now call the Shroud of Turin. And there is just so much more. From all of these different perspectives and more, This podcast series will delve deeper into the mystery of the Shroud of Turin. Each week, we will narrow our focus to examine one of the many ongoing questions in deeper detail. Our goal is not to prove or disprove the authenticity of the Shroud of Turin. It is not to prove a resurrection, since such proof is not possible given the supernatural nature of such an event. The goal is to explore the mystery of this incredibly compelling artifact, whether it is a holy relic or icon, and to pose questions that will hopefully lead listeners to questions and answers of their own. It will be a journey for the mind and, yes, the heart. So, next week, we will explore the wounds of the man in the shroud. What does the image reveal about the injuries depicted? This is a necessary starting point to looking at other unique features and identifying characteristics. All data used in these podcasts come from the critical summary of observations, data, and hypotheses compiled by Dr. John Jackson and other leading Shroud experts. That critical summary is available for purchase from CMJ Merriam Publishers and Distributors at www.cmjbooks.com. Also, we highly recommend the website Shroud.com which is the largest clearinghouse of information in the world today about the Shroud of Turin, administered by the famous Shroud photographer Barry Schwartz, who will be right here in Shreveport, March 16th through the 18th, 2018, at the Cathedral of St. John Berkman's, something you will not want to miss. Our own webpage, sjbcathedral.org, has helpful links and information as well. We welcome feedback. Let us know what questions we can answer for you, perhaps in a future episode. Whatever this mysterious strip of linen cloth is, it pushes the limits of the human imagination, our capacity for knowledge, and invites all of us to a deeper inquiry and reflection. There is no question that this remarkable object has inspired much devotion, especially following the photographic revelation of the man of the shroud. Is it indeed the holy face? We make the words of Psalm 26 our own as we conclude this week's podcast. Of you my heart has spoken, seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. Until next week, this is Father Peter Mangan. And this is Dr. Cheryl White. Thank you for listening and learning more about the Holy Shroud. Let others know about this podcast. Until next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. May he turn his countenance toward you and give you his peace. Amen.